What's up, Pirates? Wraith and Jim here with Awaken TCG, and today we have a very crazy video. If you guys don't know, August 12th, we were going to get some bans, and so they finally revealed them, so we're going to go ahead and talk about them. Yeah, so we knew the bans were coming, and a lot of people expected RP Law to be banned, as he is just a bit too oppressive in the OP08 format. And to no one's surprise, this is what we got. I'm sure you guys have seen it already, we are a little late, but Red Purple Law is completely banned, uh, replaced by a promo leader that is honestly not even worth talking about, you guys have probably seen it already anyway, and NES Lobby has also been banned as well, um, obviously targeting CP0 Rob Lucci. Um, that one obviously a bit less of a hit, I know. A lot of people, myself included, just wanted a Moria ban. The card is a 4 of staple in every black deck. It's very overtuned, but they're going to go with this, which I think is a fair ban. Um, but what we want to talk about today is, if you can see on screen, this was posted on the official Twitter account of the One Piece card game English. We did not know when we were getting these bans, but as you can see, we will be getting them on September 6th of 2024 which is before even OP08 comes out, which means the Nationals in Dallas, Texas, that Wraith and myself will be in attendance for, mm -hmm. will not have Red Purple Law or Ineos Lobby allowed. Um, you were playing RP Law, correct? I, I was playing Lucci. We are both affected by this. And yeah, obviously, was... yeah, the meta itself is going to be completely shaken up. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about what we think, at least try to make a new meta tier list for this new set yeah i mean we got to make sense of something right so normal rp law uh, i was very heavy into that deck and and i was very confident i'm playing it this weekend uh, at peoria so you know hopefully i can get a good performance before they completely ban the leader um and then obviously uh any lobby i think that card makes luchi go from tier one to a tier of its own when you do play it, especially on curve going second mm -hmm. um but yeah, I mean, let's let's talk about, you know, some of the changes that are going to be upcoming into this meta uh, a week before Nats, you know, these take effect. And so uh, it's kind of like another uh, fake meta or like half meta that we've had so many times. Um, but now we actually have a whole brand new OP08 compared to the East. Uh, so I am excited for that. Um, not as much for this Nats coming up. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the leaders and, and see what we think. Yeah, so getting into this, again, this is only going to be for the very brief end of OP07 format we're going to have that um, they never had in the East. Um, we are looking very much forward to our own OP08 format, which will be fun, where we can finally not just copy what the East does. So let's get into this. We are only going to be talking about the relevant leaders, um, anything that is not good. Obviously, it probably got a little bit better now that RP Law is gone, but not really worth talking about in the grand scheme of things. So first up here as a Luchi player, after he is nerfed with no Ineos Lobby, um, I might not think this leader is tier one anymore. If decks like Reiju are showing up as a new tier one contender, um, BY Luffy now doesn't have to deal with RP Law anymore. Um, and maybe a lot of people will start flocking to that deck. I'm not sure if Lucci is still sitting in tier one because the Aeneas Lobby every single turn was just free of value. Now you're gonna have to do things like Ice Age, which costs you cards out of hand. It is going to be not nearly as good. Um, so I'm thinking tier two, what do you think? Um, yeah, we can, we can, it's definitely somewhere in between the two. Yeah. Um, I think we can have a spot in either or tier one or tier two. Um, the deck definitely got a significant power uh, decrease, uh, but there has been lists that already don't run stage, and so mm -hmm. uh, it does have you know the whole uh, CP package with Moria um, as its toolbox, which is probably still the best in the game. Um, but obviously now it's going to be different leaders in the meta that actually you know can have you know good a uh, good matchup into Luchi which mm -hmm. overall could mean that it'll go down a tier. Uh, so I think this spot is fine for now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Lucci uh, taking a step back, which means Moria might, you know, make a little resurgence. I think Moria is a little bit more defensive, uh, more consistent. Um, I think still tier two, uh, but 
you know, overall, I think these two decks still have what it takes to definitely contend. Um, again, Raju coming in. I think Raju has a good matchup into both of these decks. Um, I would, I would, con I would consider a tier one here for Raju. Obviously, yeah, I agree. there's a lot of testing that has to be done to confirm that. Uh, but we have seen already a lot of players starting to pick it up, and I've seen a lot of tweets. Everyone is saying, "Oh, Raju is the new tier one. Raju is the new, um, you know, deck that's going to take uh, the whole meta by storm." And so, uh, very, very excited to see what the deck can do. I did lose to it uh, last weekend in Pasadena as RP Law. Uh, I got Exodia, that's what they call it, a portion to each GG on curve, which was really rough to deal with. But I think this deck is going to be fun to watch uh, in this new meta. Yeah, a lot of people are saying uh, new best deck in format, blah, blah, blah. I think we need to hold off on that. Uh, Rage is really good, but I, I, it's never going to be an RP Law level of power. Um, so I think people need to chill and we need to let the meta pan out. But another leader I think is worth talking about is Black and Yellow Luffy. Obviously, this leader was already Tier 1. Um, very, very strong leader if you saw the results of the Pasadena Top 32. This was nine of the leaders, which was the most uh, biggest chunk of that entire breakdown. Um, and the fact that RP Law is now gone and the second best deck, Luchi, is nerf that it already had a good matchup into. Um, I think this deck's tier one still for sure, um, especially if a lot of people are playing Raju. I don't exactly know how this matchup goes, but I, as a person that's played Raju myself, you don't play with a whole lot of Dawn. So if this leader is getting buffed to 9k, um swinging into them is going to be a very difficult task so i still think by luffy's tier one um and i don't really think there's any reason to think otherwise yeah 100 percent. i think obviously it keeps all the good matchups while getting rid of one of the bad matchups in rp law like you said uh, it has a great matchup already into the black decks i think the only issue here um, is we might see a resurgence in some blue decks such as mm -hmm. blue dofi yeah i think blue dofi with luchi um having stage removed means it's gonna have that matchup which is its worst matchup be slightly better uh, on top of that it doesn't have to deal with rp law which rp law just beats everything and it has a good matchup into by and i would say nami so knowing that i think this deck is gonna have a spot in the meta uh, as before it did not it was completely shut out uh, by decks like Luchi, RP Law, it just it it could not survive. But now, without you know the tier one stage Luchi builds and RP Law out of the meta, I feel like it could have a spot because it just it just destroys BY. It bottoms decks all its five costs, and it'll never have any units to actually play with leader effect. And so, um, I think an aggressive Dofi build is is on the come up. For sure yeah, yeah i agree i mean as, as someone that's played luchi you like if you got stage into that matchup with the brook on board it was pretty much gg um it was already kind of difficult when they would like board swarm early early with the gene bay into a weevil and now they're i mean there's just no way luchi's getting rid of that on four dawn so this leader is going to be a menace especially when he high rolls um I, and i think boa we don't need to talk about it uh, too much but pretty much in the same vein it's obviously not as good as dofi i think um but now with Luchi being worse, which was by far Boa's worst matchup, um, I think this can kind of shine a little bit, and especially if BY Luffy is going to be played a lot, because Boa is very good into BY Luffy if you see your Gravity Blades. So I think these two blue decks are in a very good spot to be good in the meta for sure. Um, and another blue deck I want to talk about real quick, which a lot of people are very scared about, is going to be Nami. So with the meta being a bit... You know, RP Law is gone, which was the number one deterrent for this deck. Um, people are scared it's going to get out of hand. Um, as someone that's played against a lot of Nami myself, uh, I don't think so. There's always going to be a deck that's going to be good against Nami, right? Like, you can look at it right here. Raju is not good for Nami. Uh, getting out a portion of Ichiji on 3 Dawn, believe it or not, Nami has a hard time dealing with. So, uh, for that... Um, I almost want to put Nami in tier two. Like, there's still going to be rough matchups. Like, Moria does okay at the Nami if you keep ripping Peronas. Um, there's a few other decks that I think are going to be pretty good. So, I don't think we need to, you know, call for bans or everybody be scared yet. Um, and I've seen everybody be putting this in tier one. So, I kind of want to be a little controversial. Say it's tier two. What do you think? 
Um, yeah, I feel like although it probably has one of the better matchup spreads, I think the biggest thing this deck has going for it is a lot of people do not know how to play into the deck, mm -hmm. which really just allows them to get a free win sometimes. Uh, people don't know the right numbers to swing, when to swing, uh, what turns to build board, and I think that's probably one of the biggest issues when versing this deck. Uh, I feel like if a lot of people just learn the matchup correctly, um, it would ha it, it wouldn't have as much uh, success as it does. Uh, I I'm fine with keeping this in tier two. Um, next up here, uh, I think Bonnie is really worth talking about. This deck was already good, uh, pretty decent tier two uh, deck, um, and now that By Luffy is going to be pretty much one of the faces of the meta. Uh, I think Bonnie is right there, as this has a fantastic matchup into BY Luffy. Um, struggles a bit into blue, so if we see a lot of blue, Bonnie's going to be a little bit scared. It'll be better into Luchi now as well, so I kind of like Bonnie. Um, I don't think it's a tier 1 deck, but I think this has a pretty decent spot in tier 2. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's auto one into BY, like you said. Um, it does struggle against blue, I think. Uh, if blue makes a resurgence such as Dofi and Boa, it it can have, you know, kind of like a bad effect on the whole matchup spread as a whole for Bonnie. Uh, but overall, I think green is still really strong and, and Bonnie was topping beforehand. And so I think it'll still continue to to take up some of the spots in the top 32. For sure. Um, next up, let's go ahead and talk about red green law. This is interesting. Uh, red green law's worst matchup, obviously being Lucci um now that luchi has oh and obviously the other law deck right rp yeah. law and luchi the best two decks in the meta in my opinion before the bands was probably the worst two matchups for red green law uh but now i think it actually can be playable i feel like now you have a matchup spread to where okay you could probably just dodge a couple of matchups and you're in topka then it's just okay be better than the player in front of you right uh I'm gonna put. I would put it in tier three. I think. Yeah. Uh, while it's good, it's not great, but it's definitely a deck that you still can run in a tournament and, and see success. Yeah, I uh, completely agree with that. Um, I think Luchi getting stage ban doesn't really affect this matchup. Like, you still can play a four drop Luchi with no cost reduction, and you remove two things on Law's board, uh, preventing him from getting to five on board quickly. So. Um, still a rough matchup in the Luchi, but depending on what the meta looks like, this you know this leader could definitely pull out um, some wins. Um, and I almost want to say Zoro is kind of in the same vein. I don't think he's as good as Law, but depending on what we see, I think Zoro can be in a good spot with less Luchis and less Laws to just completely remove board every turn. Um, could be a tier three deck as well. This one maybe is a little bit cope, but um, I've seen some people talking about it for sure. Um, next up too, I want to talk about Purple Luffy. Uh, this leader is kind of a sleeper agent, honestly. A um, lot of good matchups. Um, pretty solid into Luchi. If you get the Magellans on curve, it is insanely annoying to remove unless you have a six cost Brook. Um, into matchups like even uh, BY Luffy aren't the worst in the world if you can develop a board. Um, so, I don't know, even into Nami, like, if, uh, if everybody's playing Nami, this deck completely shits on Nami. So, um, I think depending on what people are playing and how the meta pans out, I think Purple Luffy could seriously be a contender. Um, I'll keep it in Tier 3 for now, but I could see this being a lot better. Yeah, 100%. I think, uh, uh, since it has such a good matchup spread into Yellow, uh, not really having to worry about uh, Luchi being able to clear everything on curve without having to go down in hand size because now I think the biggest issue is like Luchi has to cough up cards from hand mm -hmm. early on like the ice ages and so it'll, they'll get to a point where they're going to run out of resources as before you could just leader swing stage use one unit you establish the body you pop two uh, and it was crazy right um, so it, it, it's definitely going to be very interesting I think there's a lot of testing to be done to figure out what is actually going to you know come out on top uh, i think one deck we can talk about as well is uh perona i think perona beforehand honestly just could not beat luchi uh it had a pretty good matchup spread into by uh because of the 10 cost dofi and then i think it had a decent matchup spread into rp law 
um, although it was unfavored, I feel like now with that gone is as one of its worst matchups up there. I think it's in tier two. I think this deck is actually really good. Um, it had the tools before and now it's just into the meta as an even better deck just because it doesn't have to worry about uh, full power Luchi or a RP law that would just rush down a four life prone a leader. Yeah, I could definitely agree with that. Honestly, I think this deck was already really good, just not a lot of people playing it. Um, but obviously now with uh, a losing matchup and a other losing matchup being knocked down, Prone is going to be a lot better. So uh, another deck definitely worth talking about is Katakuri, as Katakuri had a really, really rough time in RP Law. And with that completely gone, this deck is very scary. Um... Like, you know, Katakuri is still going to do Katakuri things, you know, Ten Mom, etc., getting insane triggers every turn. Um, so this deck's always always going to be good. Even into Nami, the ability to swing 7 every turn into Ten Moms in the later stages of the game is just really hard for that deck to deal with. Um, so, honestly, the matchup spread for this right now with not a whole lot of aggro decks is probably pretty solid for Kata. I almost want to put him to Tier 2. What do you think? Yeah, I think, <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure Kata just loses to BY, but besides that, it has a good Nami into um, Reiju if you trigger out. I think it's it's doable if you, if you have some nice triggers against mm -hmm. Reiju, but I think overall, I think Reiju is slightly favored. Um, it just straight up beats Nami, right? Um, loses to BY, but I think it has a good matchup into uh, the other blue decks as well, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Being yeah, I think it's all right. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know. Uh, I, I would put it in tier two. I think Cat is just really, really strong. Um, and it can just cheat out wins, right? That's that's what yellow does best. For sure. Um, how about we talk about this other yellow deck with yellow and Nell already one of the top decks. And now getting one of its worst matchups removed in RP Law is kind of a big deal. Um, this kind of already struggled into Luchi, but without Luchi having stage, you do not get those free Moria turns to remove the 9 and 10 drops now. You need that Ice Age in hand, um, pretty much to remove stuff, unless Luchi starts teching in stuff like Stussy, which makes it worse into a whole lot of other matchups. Um, I don't know, and L may even be tier 1 now. What do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I think getting rid of its worst matchup and it not having to worry about <clears throat> luchi with stage i think if the luchis aren't teching for it now i think it can be pretty good into the meta mm -hmm. obviously it's an auto loss in tanami which really sucks but uh overall i think it is the better yellow deck for sure would you put it in tier one or tier two um i'd put it in tier one just because it's yellow and it can and it can stack right and then just has infinite life so Oh yeah, the deck is insane. Um, another yellow deck, real quick, we want to talk about uh, Yamato here, uh, green and yellow. This leader is always a very scary. Um, honestly, not a lot of people playing this deck, and I'm not going to act like I'm an expert on the matchup spread, but I imagine these two decks being taken out of the meta and a deck like BY being on top is probably pretty good for Yamato. I don't know, what do you think? Overall, I think I'm gonna be honest. I think Yamato is a really bad deck. Um, <clears throat> not even just because I hated it back in 06. I think it's just really bad. Um, I feel like it just never has any momentum going for it. Mm -hmm. Like if the deck just runs um, blockers, it kind of just loses, right? It'll yeah. never have kind of that power to uh, keep up tempo with a deck like Luchi, like Dofi. So it's like if you're not playing aggro rush uh, Yamato and you win before turn five, you kind of just lose the game, um, which feels kind of bad. Obviously, there's a fortress Yamato build, which I think is the worst of the two. Um, I, I don't know. I, I I'd personally definitely put in tier three or not even yeah. at all. But uh, I didn't. This it's one of the leaders I didn't even give thought uh, when yeah. the bands came out. For sure. I, yeah. I mean, because I don't really know if it's too affected by the bands to be honest with you um but yeah with that being said we only have a couple more leaders that i really i think worth talking about and one of the ones here is going to be rp luffy so this is one of my favorite decks for sure and i already think it had a pretty solid matchup into luchi 
Now it is going to be a lot better, no doubt about that. RP Law was very difficult, as you know, you take one life, Cannon Killers already swing seven at you, which was just really impossible to deal with with this leader. But now with that gone, and the top decks being Raju and By Luffy, which spoilers are winning matchups for Red Purple Luffy, in my opinion. Um, Puts this deck in a very good spot. Not to mention, it completely face rolls Nami as well. So, if we're thinking that's top three, this deck has a winning matchup into the top three. Um, if you don't know why, I'll do. I'll run it through real quick. Reiju run, runs very low in Dawn, which means if Luffy ever gets buffed to seven or eight, Reiju does not have enough Dawn to attack. Um, Nami, obviously, a super rush deck with big cards is going to destroy Nami. That is a given. And then BY for the specific reason that once you play 10 cost Luffy and get a free turn, uh, the leader's buffs do not last until the start of their next turn. They last until the end of your next turn, which means on your free turn, they're back to 5k and you have a 12k on board that is now swinging at a zero life leader for free with cards like Diablo Jambe if they have Sabos up. So this destroys apparently people's top three in the meta right now. So... I, I'm going to put this guy in tier 2. Um, I really think he is a, in a very good spot going into this end of OPO7 meta. Yeah, and then uh, looking at the rest of these leaders here, the only one for me that I think uh, really needs to be talked about um, is you guys might meme on me, but it's, it's Red Green Odin. Um, <clears throat> Red Green, oh, it's the fourth leader on there. Yeah, uh, Red Green Odin... Uh, I think in mesquite format uh, captain ski's got top 64 with it uh it's worse it's worst matchup probably being uh luchi or not luchi yeah it was moria um but now with some of the new cards that it has access to it's not as bad uh, i feel like it has definitely a little bit of power um and so it's definitely one of the decks i want to test out uh it, it it honestly won rp law if the rp law didn't see its cards uh, I think it's a super fast rush deck that will beat Nami. Uh, it will beat BY. Um, it has a good matchup spread into uh, decks that are slower just because of how fast it can ramp up. And then it has the options to run, you know, big boss monsters like um, what's it called? Whitebeard. And then uh, with leader effect, you can become an AK leader. Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously you have cards to blow up uh, blockers and, you know, try to go for sneaky lethals. I'd put this in tier three, and it's it's one of the decks I'm definitely going to give a shot. For sure. Yeah, definitely interesting pick that I didn't really think about. Um, and let's I'm going to talk about one more leader just because I'm kind of on the cope train. It is BY Ace. So this leader had a pretty rough matchup into Luchi, and now Luchi does not have stage. It's going to be a little bit harder for them to remove your five drops every single turn. Um against by this leader has a pretty decent matchup as you do run pudding um they're gonna they're gonna take your 9ks early and then you can just putting their hand down to five and really ruin their day um against reiju the same thought process with red and purple luffy being a 7k leader not a lot of dawn is going to make that really annoying for them um so honestly into two of the best decks i think this has a really good matchup but it is held back by inconsistency so I'm going to put Ace in Tier 3, but I think he's at least worth talking about. Yeah, 100%. All right, Pirates, thank you guys so much for watching and staying until the end of this video. Uh, so these are just our early thoughts. We haven't actually tested any of these decks uh, as far as the new ones go, uh, or we've made any changes to a Luchi list that doesn't run uh, the stage. So uh, definitely uh, going to be a lot to learn, a lot of information that's going to be learned, and uh, we have to act upon it now. There's about a month left before the very first Nationals for this uh, year. Uh, actually, technically, it'll be the second one this year, but it's the first one for this new season. Uh, this is going to be very, very exciting. Obviously, we are both going to attend. And yeah, I, I, I hope we see all you guys there. It's going to be real fun. Uh, with that being said, you guys stay tuned for our next video. Subscribe to my Patreon. Like this video. Comment down below. Subscribe to our channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.